can't miss this unique <laughs> opportunity because I have two former CEOs here. But what does the CEO do? Well, they're there, there's a lot of concepts actually involved in being a CEO. I, I mean, some of you out there maybe haven't had that opportunity, but these two have, and they can tell you there's a lot of concepts in there. Puff, puff. It, it, for, first of all, it involves profit, uh, you know, because you're supposed to be guiding a company uh, and they're supposed to be making money, not losing hundreds of thousands of dollars. The thing, I'm not a CEO, but. but uh, but we, our, our church reports just come in. Uh, <laughs> we're, we just keep giving away. We lost three hundred thousand dollars last year. Oh my God, it's just depreciation. I'm like, okay, I need an accountant here. But <laughs> but what I'm going to go to this thing. They had there was a lot of concepts involved with a CEO because you're you know you're, you're seemingly overseeing a company, and a company is quite a construct too. You know, it's a legal entity, but it's got a lot of things in it. Most companies has a lot of things. And then, and, and then you're kind of over people and you tend to be over managers or firing, hiring people. I'm sure you both had to fire and hire people. There's decisions. All these decisions involve concepts and beliefs. And Buddha had it right and Jesus had it right that you have to empty the mind of all concepts and beliefs. So that's why I say that you can't be enlightened and be a CEO because you can't, be a mind that's wrapped up with all these concepts and be enlightened, which is an empty mind, a mind that's clueless about the world. It's just clueless and trusting its source and trusting its source for everything. Not, not even a, a word is out of place, not a dot, not a tittle. Nothing is out of place in, in that full enlightened state of mind. So maybe you can just share a bit because for both of you, it was a, a pretty intense unwinding. The ego was bucking and like a bronco in there. Uh, I got to experience it more directly with Lisa, uh, <laughs> but Michael was over going through with the Kirsten, Jason, and a lot of mighty companions during that whole process. I'm sure there's lots of parallels, but but it was quite it was, intense. It was very intense. Very intense. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know where to begin. You know, there's a lot <laughs> <laughs> to go back into that realm or whatever. Yeah, it was quite something. But, you know, one of the things was, as you, you know that, David, you know, I, I kind of almost was trying to bring uh, truth into the illusion. Uh, when I met you, you know, it was a lot of, you know, I was using it to heal my mind, but I was also trying to bring the truth into the illusion. I remember I even said to you at one point, I'm, my goal is to bring heaven to earth or something, yes, yes. you know, and then you totally flipped it all around <laughs> <laughs> and told me it was an impossibility. Well, you seemed, seemed to have it working. There. It was working. In your belief system, it, it was, was working. It was working. She had heaven manifesting all over the, all place. Over the place. And so yeah, she was but, quite convinced that that's the way that it was going. Yeah. And I was getting to use, well, I guess for me, it was more of a backdrop for me to talk about God and teach what I needed to learn and using it. To heal my mind but there came a certain point with it where i saw there was just such a compromise you know um especially when i started traveling with you i know for me was when i just started to be able to talk about god all the time you know we were out on these doing gatherings and in the car and just the trips of when we would go out and then when i would come back to my office be like what am i doing here 